Okay guys, as you can see I bought more than I needed to at Radio Shack, but there was just certain things that I had to buy the the combo, combo pack to get what I needed because I didn't know the values of the resistors, which are right here, these are the resistor pack. I didn't know the exact value of the resistors, or here the capacitor pack, I didn't know the exact value of the capacitors that I needed because I just didn't have the time to do the research um, just because of work and and other obligations so they used to sell a this is a, a project box this one comes with an optional metal lid or the, the ABS plastic lid you can use either but not both they used to sell a project box that used a PC board like this one but it came with the box it was all one unit and uh, I bought another bigger PC board for a, a future project that I have planned but I, I didn't see those project boxes anymore um, at least not in the Radio Shack that I visited so apparently either they've either stopped making those project boxes with the the PC board that you could actually put in the box that made it that actually fit this box here it has mounts in there I mean you can see let me get this just right in the light here you can see here here's a mount for a PC board there's one in every corner to put a PC board in that box but they don't sell the PC board that fits the box these type of PC boards here, this one is, each hole has its own separate copper foil. Um, these are actually made for dip circuits, dip chips, IC chips. So that's why I got these, because of uh, the parts I need to put in. I uh, bought some PNP and NPN type transistors. I bought a couple of potentiometers, a uh, one, one k ohm and a ten k ohm. Um, I've got my parts here, the the relay. Um, I bought the the battery holder, holding three batteries. Even though my my relay is five volts, four and a half volts will activate the relay. Um, I have the the window alarm that I'm going to use um, and as you can see here I got my multimeter and my soldering iron and some solder so I was planning on getting started on this 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 weekend but I had the the issue with my phone a friend of mine gave me a ride back to Louisville today I got my new phone works good no more half screen so I got my new phone and my new phone works good so we will get started on this project throughout this week um, I'm not sure how soon I can get an update on this video on it just depends on how far I get on this project and you know it's just I've got other projects in the workings and or in my mind and what I want to do with this but it's just a good start and since I'm stuck away from my storage and I can't get to the ele electronic components that I already have I mean this just adds to my to my storage of electronic components and or to my electronics kit so I mean once you use you know a couple of 10k resistors and you don't have any anymore then you know you have to replace them eventually so I only had you know I'd only originally purchased one pack of these assorted resistors and I had only originally purchased one pack of these assorted capacitors and once you run out of you know what's in there that you need then you don't have those no more and then you have to buy them separately which is a lot more expensive so I figure you know it's worth it to to buy another assortment pack of each 
just to increase my stock and then you know if I need more of one certain value of resistor or capacitor later on in the future then I can go ahead and spend the the extra money to buy those packs but just wanted to you know give you an update and let you know how we're going on this and uh, we're gonna get started on it here over the next couple days between work and and uh, chore time so I've got to get up early tomorrow and go do laundry because I spent all this weekend hiking so we're gonna we're gonna get working on this like I said I've got my my multimeter and my uh, solder and iron and and solder here ready to go and we'll get started on this in the evenings this week and we'll keep you updated throughout the week as to uh, where we're coming along with it and you know I'm probably gonna have to do some initial wiring and testing and and things I've already tested the uh, the little uh, relay that I got to make sure that it would work I was kinda iffy if it would work because it said it was a 5 volt relay and three batteries is only four and a half volts but it does work so uh, we will yeah, and that's another thing too. I had planned on getting three AA battery uh, battery pack, and they didn't have them. So unfortunately, I had to go with a AAA, which they just you know they hold less power overall. But you have to make deal with what you have to. And this is just going to be a prototype. And uh, just because of the fact that the PC boards do not fit in this box. I probably will not sacrifice this box for the project. I will probably just put this on a a piece of scrap uh, polycarbonate uh, plexiglass. You guys know it as. I will probably just bolt this down to a piece of uh, scrap plexiglass that I can pick out of the trash at work and have permission to take home. Just because of the fact that you know the PC boards don't fit in the box and I can't make a nice project and the fact that it's you know it's not an ideal project and I mean trash to treasure this is something I can pick out of the trash and rather than spending my money on it and I will probably save this project box for for something more something more sophisticated hey guys Andy here I've got all these parts that I've got to do this uh, photo cell alarm, laser alarm. Um, I bought these capacitors and I didn't have the schematic with me at the time. And unfortunately none of these capacitors are big enough. I need a, a thousand microfarad. This one here, you can tell by the size of my hand, this is a fairly large capacitor and it's only a 220 microfarad so this is only you know not even a quarter of the size that I need so I didn't I didn't realize that the schematic called for such a large capacitor um, here's the schematic here that I'm going to use and then in, in place of the siren here I will use a relay and use that relay to to run my my circuit here that I cut out of the uh, the window alarm I had torn one apart but in process of ripping this out of the hole I bent the speaker and I just couldn't get the loud sound that I got from it before so I cut one apart and left the speaker intact and I'll probably JB weld that into the into the box um, I'm gonna test it first but like I said um, I don't have a thousand microfarad capacitor I have a 2, 2N3904 uh, NPN transistor I could not find a 5k pot at Radio Shack but I got a 10k which should work fine. I mean, I can just turn it down, you know, halfway or below halfway to 
obtain what I need to uh, to tune the the circuit. And then here's where the the CDS cell goes, cadmium sulfide cell. And then the circuit doesn't show the battery voltage. I'm gonna have to play with it, and hopefully the battery voltage doesn't need to be too high. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I might have to run a, a separate battery. I might have to run the actual siren here off of uh, my battery pack of three AAAs, which I have here, which is four and a half volts, and then I might have to run this detector circuit off of a nine volt. So, because I don't know, I don't think a, I don't think a transistor is going to fire on, on four and a half volts. So, I might have to get me a, a nine volt, and use that as a separate uh, power supply to, to fire this circuit. But I, even though I have this uh, five volt relay. I have tested the relay. It will fire on four and a half volts, so I'm gonna have to uh, play with it a little more. And just the fact that I don't have that capacitor is a bummer for me, because I was hoping to work on this over the weekend, and I actually desoldered this capacitor out of another circuit, and it's the biggest capacitor that I have here available to me. These are all way too small. These are in pico and nanofarads and I need a thousand micro as you can see here a thousand microfarad. So pico and nanofarads I mean I could hook a bunch of them up <laughs> in what parallel? Yeah I could hook a bunch of them up in parallel and get the thousand microfarad that I need but that'd be a lot of work so I don't know we'll see what happens and uh, I've got a, a nice project box here you can see in comparison to my new phone my Note 3 um, it has a, either a, a plastic cover or an aluminum cover you can pick and choose which one you want but yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to play with it and uh, decide on what I'm going to do. And I bought resistors. I bought a pack of resistors. And not having this schematic with me, I didn't realize that it didn't have any resistors, just a pot. So, but hey, it is what it is. I've got more for my, more for my electronics kit when I uh, actually get a vehicle that I can drive. So, whoop. yeah, when I actually get a vehicle that I can drive, so uh, it, I'm probably going to play with this a little bit, maybe just temporarily solder it together and see if I can make it work with the, the 220 microfarad capacitor. Uh, I don't know, and um, you know, it might work. I'll have to try it, so we'll uh, maybe play with it here and let you know. All right, I think I have the capacitors to make this work. I found a 820 microfarad capacitor in a piece of uh, junk electronics at work today, and I desoldered it. You can see there, 820 microfarad, 25 volts. That's plenty for what I need. This one's 50 volts, 220 microfarad. I needed a, a thousand microfarad. I mean, a thousand and forty. I don't think 40 microfarads gonna gonna mess it up too much. So, I mean, since I'm using the the 10k pot, I'm sure I can adjust that out. So we're gonna start soldering this stuff together and uh, give it a test and and see if it works, if it switches or not. So uh, yeah, we'll. I've got to do some work on this yet, and I need some more wire. Um, preferably like some some phone wire uh, solid copper small strands but uh, I think I can get some of that I mean I've got some in storage I just can't make it to storage 
So, and I think I have my truck sold. Uh, a guy is supposed to contact me back tomorrow. Lives up uh, Illinois, and said he had to uh, plan it out for either Friday or Saturday morning because he has to get a, a trailer to haul the thing back. So we'll keep you posted on how it goes with the truck. I mean, I'm losing a lot of money on it, but I've lost a lot of money on it already. I've got almost $700 invested in into parts on the truck, and it's just not worth it to me to fix it. So, all right, well, I think I'm going to put these parts in here and, and solder this together and see what I come up with. And hopefully it'll work. So we got this printed circuit board here, PC board, and I'm gonna stick, start soldering the parts in. And if I hook, like I said, if I hook these two capacitors in parallel, which is kind of crazy because if you look, they're both the same size. And this one here is. 820 microfarads and this one is 220 and it's just because of the uh, the wrappings inside they're almost like wrapped with like an aluminum foil with a dielectric compound in between and yeah I don't it doesn't feel any heavier but but it's real thin foil so so yeah I ended up buying all these for nothing but I'll use them for something in the future I uh, will uh, come up with more projects. So we're going to get started on this and uh, we'll keep you updated. Alrighty guys, I got this uh, PC board. You can see it's got connections from here to here. And these are all single solder connections and you got like three in a row. And then the two rows run down the center. Usually, for, usually these are used for your positive and your minus from your battery these two rows and then you can feed into other circuits or components out here um, I've actually started on this board started soldering in parts I had to wait and get some wire um, you can see a jumper wire that I put in there to connect these two capacitors connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative to connect them in parallel to actually add the two capacitance together. Um, like I said, I think I'm gonna be about, I'm gonna be 40 microfarads over, which I don't think that's gonna affect the circuit much. Um, I can adjust that out with a potentiometer. Uh, this is the wire I had to get. I had to get some uh, solid wire. This is not your, your stranded wire. It's just one solid wire there in the end. Yeah, and it's coated just to solder in for my jumper wires. Uh, I'm trying to use even a small stranded wire like on this battery pack. I mean, unless you tend them first, put you know, put the solder on the wire, it would just be too difficult. It's way easier with this solid fine wire. I got this out of a piece of uh, Ethernet cable, basically. So. I've started on this. I've got two capacitors soldered in there. Started running the jumper across. I still got to do these connections across, connect across the positive of them, and then add some more components in here. But I've got it started, so I just kind of wanted to show you that, and I'm going to continue to work on this this evening, and we'll see how things work out. So I will uh, keep you updated, and. Hopefully this uh, circuit will work. Okay, I've been soldering on the circuit. Um, I've got the potenti potentiometer installed. Um, I've got it completely installed, soldered in to the positive strip. This strip here that has the three solder marks is going to be my positive. The other side is going to be the negative. I don't have the negative installed. I have the potentiometer connected via this jumper wire here to the uh, cadmium sulfide cell. I have the two capacitors soldered in and you can see here I actually soldered them in over to the positive side 
with these two little tiny jumper wires in here. I started soldering in the transistor here. I have the base connected to the potentiometer and I have the collector soldered in to the negative side of the capacitors. So I still have to connect the emitter and I have to connect that back to the cadmium sulfide cell and I have to solder in the battery here. Now this is just the uh, the detector type or detector part of the circuit. Um, the cadmium sulfide cell, I left the leads really long so I can bend them over or whatever once I mount them in the box or I don't know if I'm going to use that great big box I got or if I'm going to use something else. Um, I still have to connect in the the alarm circuit but this video is getting long enough I think I'm going to have to continue this on to a, a part three. You can see here all the the solder connection I've done. Um, because of this PC board how it is I don't have runners. I have to make my connections with solder from, you know, this dot to this dot or whatever. So I usually just bend the wires over and then solder across. But you can see where I've made connections across here, across there, across here. And that's just how you have to do it when you're doing a I mean this is like a, a beta a beta test so that's just kinda how you have to do it when you're doing something like this but it's it's looking alright I've tried to condense everything to this half of the board because on this half of the board I want to put in my alarm circuit and I have to put in my battery pack and I don't know if I'm gonna have to uh, add two battery packs or not to fire this transistor um, I guess I'll find that out with tests once I get this complete uh, detector circuit built I'll test it with my multimeter and then I will decide if I have to have a, a separate battery pack for this versus the four and a half volts that I need for this. Um, I still need to put in the, the transformer and some more jumper wires but I'm getting really close but it's just like I said this it's running this video long to try and to try and fit all this into a part two so I think I'm gonna have to have a part three but I just wanted to let you guys know that I am working on the circuit and I will I will be testing soon and I'll let you know how things go thanks for uh, watching my channel watching my videos I've got more videos coming out soon on other ideas uh, trash to treasure I've actually got an idea for the knife that I found on the side of the road and uh, we'll try to get them out you know one project at a time okay I want to give you guys an update here I've uh, soldered in both capacitors I've got them jumper wires in here to connect the two capacitors together on this side little tiny jumper wires down in here to connect them to the negative strip this strip in the center that you see where the the white line is the strip on the top is the negative the strip on the bottom is my positive I've got my potentiometer installed I've got my transistor soldered in I have the emitter coming back to the negative side and then I have over here my uh, cadmium sulfide cell this side's connected to the negative also the positive goes to the positive side of the capacitors if you see the these capacitors these are 
polarized capacitors. They've got these little dash lines on here. That's the negative side. If you hook these capacitors up backwards, they will explode. We used to have a lot of fun with that back in electronics class. Um, my potentiometer is completely installed. Got it jumpered over here to the uh, base of the transistor. And I just need to install my battery on here. Um, I'm going to probably just temporarily solder it in to see if those four and a half volt batteries will fire the circuit, fire the transistor. The transistor is the, the, the big thing. I don't know if it will because I really don't think it will actually because a transistor usually needs a, a lot more voltage to to fire but I, I mean it might I mean because just all depends on the transistor I mean this is a 2N3904 so you've got a PNP junction or this is NPN NPN junction um, yeah it should fire because it's only should only take uh, 1.4 volts yeah 0.7 I think um, anyway I, you can see I've kind of put everything on this side of this board and that's because I want to install this here on this side of the board if I can somehow the alarm I've thought about I mean I can trim some of these parts off I can cut it off here I can cut this tab off here and I want to try to you know put this on the side of the of the board even if I have to you know keep the speaker separate but uh, we'll see how much I can trim off of this because there's a, a microchip under this this black epoxy here this black dot there's a microchip underneath of that and I'm just gonna you know see what how small I can get this how much I can trim off of this circuit without damaging the circuit I mean I you can see these these trace runners here I could actually, you know, move this coil. I'm sure it's a choke coil. I could actually move it up here and scrape the varnish off and solder it in closer. So we'll see what we can do with that. Um, I do have the switch over here, and I would like to have a switch for the battery. So maybe I can run off this positive here, this positive red wire. Whoops. Maybe I can run off this positive red wire here and then run off the switch to the negative on my PC board and then use this switch to not only turn this circuit on but to turn this circuit on. And then the last thing to solder in is the, the laser and the relay. But I need to test this first. So I'm going to have to temporarily hook the battery up to this, battery pack I should say, hook the battery pack up to this and test this circuit to see if the 4.5 volts will, will fire this transistor and allow this circuit to operate. But uh, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update, let you know that I've been working on it after all the trouble I've gone through to get the parts. And, uh, you know, it was like I said, it was 20 miles to Louisville, and it was probably, I don't know, another four or five miles, I would guess, once I hit Louisville to the Sprint store. So, because I know I'd walked pretty close to 15 miles the night that the police picked me up and gave me a ride to the Sprint store, and they said it was not the police officer the lady officer said it was nine miles from where she picked me up to the sprint store so I just kinda wanted to give you guys an update let you know where I'm going with this and uh, I will probably have this you know I'm hoping to have this operational by the weekend uh, it's just they had me working a lot of hours and I was supposed to have this Saturday off they're having a, a company Christmas party for the company being there for 25 years 
or this plant being open for 25 years, I should say. But if I've got to work Saturday night, I am not getting out of bed at 9 or 9.30 Saturday morning to go to this party and then turn around and have to work all night. So, And the way they're talking, I'm going to have to work Saturday night, so I might just miss the party. But I just kind of wanted to let you know, I know the, the pieces for this video are are adding up they're getting kind of long and with me soldering this together you know it's just a lot of work and you know a lot of recording and you can see here on the back you know I had to connect like you know from this dot here because the, the the foil the copper foil on the back doesn't solder across or doesn't connect across I should say Let me get this closer you can see the little dots here they don't connect across here while well, these three these three holes are connected with that copper foil you know here I just bent the wire over and then soldered across it to connect it to connect it together I had to do that in a lot of places and that's just how I made my connections and then you know and then the, the jumper wires you can see everywhere to uh, run from the circuitry on in and then the reason I left this cadmium sulfide cell leads so long so I can I can bend this over if I need to. I can put this in a box and I can bend this over at 90 degrees and have it pointing out the side of the box. So we're gonna we're gonna play with this and uh, figure out how to connect the batteries up temporarily so I can test it. And we'll uh Make sure it works fine like I want it to and then get this potentiometer adjusted and tune the circuit and then if everything works okay I'll add the rest of the circuit and I'll put that in the next video.